Welcome to part 20 of the Mini Golf Marble Machine Build. In this video, I'll be touching up the color on the water wheel, building a decorative plate for the on off switch, and testing some landscaping techniques while applying some foliage to a small section of the machine. The water wheel had gotten some plaster residue on it during some earlier steps. I wanted to bring it back up to par, so first I gently sanded off any residue I could without taking anything away from the actual structure. Next, I applied a fresh coat of stain to the wheel to bring out even more color. The next part I built was the decorative plate for the on-off switch. I held off working on this part for a while because I didn't want to have to touch up this after plastering or painting the rocks. First, I measured and cut out a piece to fit the space. Then, I carefully marked the piece to find the place where the switch will pop through. Once I was certain I had found the right spot, I used a drill to cut out the hole. It fit well around the switch, but a bit of trimming around the edges was necessary to make it fit with the surrounding landscaping. I sanded a bit more on the underside of the plate around the hole to make it fit even better. Once I was content with how the plate fit, I moved on to painting it. First, I sketched out the on-off lettering using an interesting looking font. Then I painted it using the green, red, and gray colors already shown on the machine. When the paint had dried, I glued it in place. Because of the way that I built the switch when I first started on the machine, there was a small gap between the decorative plate and the rest of the base. I used spackle to fill the gap and smooth out the edges.
After painting on the gray, I realized that there was some surface underneath the water wheel that had not been painted yet. This basin will eventually be filled with water as one of the waterfalls will appear to be flowing right into it. Something else that needed to get done was to sand all the sides. I made two passes. The first pass with 120 grit smoothed out some of the unflush edges. The second pass with 220 grit made everything very smooth. I haven't yet decided what I'm doing with the sides. I'm leaning towards painting it gray to match the rest of the barriers. Anything else may just be an eyesore. Alright, it's finally time to start adding some greenery to the machine. Before I jump in and add stuff to the entire machine, I'll first do a small test section to see if I like what I had planned. If I needed to make any adjustments in materials or colors, this would be the time to figure that out. First, I sprayed on some scenic cement. Then, I sprinkled on some fine grass. This is meant to simulate a basic grass covering. During all this landscaping, I was being very careful to avoid getting anything on the tracks, but I wasn't perfect and still had to use a brush to remove some of the pesky bits from the walls. I then sprayed on some more scenic cement to help keep the grass in place. Next, I took some very small rocks and scattered them about the area. Using an eyedropper, I applied a decent amount of scenic cement to keep the rocks in place. I cut the opposite end of an eyedropper to make a small spoon. That made it possible to carefully add a light coat of grass over some of the rocks. And of course, I followed that up with another spritzing. Next, I added in some small bushes. The glue I'm using will turn clear once it's dry. One more spritzing for good measure. This stuff isn't going anywhere. I'm pretty happy with how this landscape trial worked out. You can see that there's a big difference between an area with and without the added foliage. And that's it for this video. In the next part, I'll be doing the foliage for the rest of the machine. There's definitely going to be a drastic difference in how it looks now compared to how it'll look when that step is done.